What is this? Actually, a really good start. <clears throat> There we go. Yeah, you guys can hear me. You guys will be able to hear faster. Um, we're going to have to do audio adjustments like always. That's that's like normal. All right. I'm super excited to learn as much as I can about Mega Man 3. You guys should be too. I I have done speedruns of Mega Man 1, 2, 3, 4, 9. And I've done speedruns of Mega Man 10 base mode. And I would say the Mega Man 3... Mega Man 3 is the most fun, but most physically strenuous. Like, it's... Like, Mega Man 2 and 1 and 3, like, they're all hard in their own way. But Mega Man 3 hurts my body when I play it. It hurts hurts my body. Um, I didn't get that pain from Mega Man 1 or Mega Man 2. Certainly not Mega Man 4, considering it's you have the charge shot. And I didn't get that stuff from base mode or, or anything. But Mega Man 3, for me, was the most physically demanding uh, Mega Man out of the Mega Mans that I have played. So... Um, but that being said, um, yeah, let's get the man on himself. Yeah. Yeah. Again, guys, give me a second to adjust the audio volumes. They, they should be fine, though. How's it going? Pretty, pretty good. Yo, what up, man? Let me uh, turn you down. Chat will yell at me and let me know. So, um, so yeah, if you could open up the video. I have it on 0 0.45. All right. <laughs> it's the timer. That's such like a random, <laughs> such a random time. Cool. I got it set up. Nice, man. Nice. How was your, how was your food? How was your pasta? Was it good? Oh, it was good. Nice, it was good. Man. That's nothing better than some good pasta. Yeah, pasta is always good. Yeah. So I was just explaining that, um, now, have you done speedruns of the entire retro Mega Man series, including 9 and 10? No, no, just 1 through 6. 1 um, through 6. Yeah, I'd be interested in learning the other ones too, but just haven't gotten around to it yet. Yeah, it's hard when when you spend like three years doing doing one Mega Man or two <laughs> years, right? Like you don't have time to jump around because they are different yeah. in their own way. Yeah, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I'd rather, you know, keep grinding one game until I'm more satisfied with it than just, you know, pick up a bunch of different ones. Exactly, I, I also agree. So, Mega Man 6 is, like, the most laggy one, isn't it? Uh, 3 is three's probably the laggiest. Uh, 3 and 4 uh, are probably heads and tails above the rest of the series when it comes to when it comes to lag. That's insane. <laughs> Mega Man 3 is so, like, it's not about how fast you can go, it's about how much you cannot create lag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of parts to the speedrun, but it's definitely, like, a, a huge factor, just, like, removing sprites from the screen, killing as many enemies as you can to, to reduce the lag. Like, there's lag reduction strats everywhere. Yeah. See, me, I particularly enjoy lag reduction strats because you're looking, like, so far outside of the box to find ways to go faster in speedruns instead of just... Um uh demanding inputs really you know it's not it's not always all about how fast you can press or move right yeah i mean i've played games without lag before speedrun games without lag and and the routing for it doesn't tend to be as interesting because like it's just not as variable as as what you get when there's lag there's just there's frame savers everywhere when when you know lag is a factor mm -hmm. and that's why retro is i find like the the most fun to speedrun games yeah, you also they're, they're super fun. About, to... Yeah, you don't have to worry about updates either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's good and bad, but uh, yeah, I, I love these old games. And, Did you ever uh, play Mega Man on the Xbox, the new version, like the Mega Man Collector's Anniversary or whatever? So I did play the Legacy Collection and the Anniversary Collection. Um, they're they're both good in their own ways. Uh, I, I think if people like want to get into the games by playing those, like those are perfectly fine, but it's just, it's not the same as the, as the old ones. Yeah. Um, they're just they're just they have their own differences and most people tend to one run the you know the old old school NES ones. Okay, so what I'm gonna do um, because I think it's actually a little important that you uh, express this. I'm gonna press play and then I'm gonna go on the mat on the on the boss select menu. Um, do you want to actually shed a little bit of light on the history between like what bosses you go for first? Because I feel like that is actually a really big role of how Mega Man Three is uh, evolved yeah. and progressed. 
Yeah, I'd love to. Um, there's actually kind of a lot that goes into that, so oh I, I I could probably talk about that for a while. You but... selected way too fast. You're too fast. <laughs> I did, like the the enemies didn't even appear. Let me see if I can even do this. Yeah, man. One I can't frame. tell you. Yeah. So okay, I have probably twenty seven thousand attempts of Mega Man Three. I can't tell you how many resets there were just on selecting that first Robot Master. Really I mean, are you serious? If, yeah, no, no, I'm not. I'm not joking. Like, if I do an early input and it takes me an extra, you know, half a second to select the stage, that that runs dead. We're resetting it. Resets in Mega Man Three are very fast. Like, you're back to the title screen almost instantly. But yeah, I mean, there's optimization, man. You know how it goes. Oh, do I ever? I I can't believe. Well. A lot of people think, oh, you know, you just missed your input, it's fine, but uh, there's a difference between uh, screwing up, like, your input and not selecting it, and screwing up your input when you think you've selected that input. So you think you've selected, you know, right, but you've missed it, so now there's a, a big time between missing it and then realizing that you've missed it, because most of the time you think, you, you know, you got it. So then you have to, it's, it's better to just reset. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not like you're just, like, mashing the buttons and you're not going to get your next one until you've realized you've missed it, like you said. So. Yeah. So in Mario 3, when that happens, when you think you've scrolled onto a level and you've pressed A to enter that level, the first thing you do is instantly press B, right? Because you want to start holding run. But B is opening your menu. So what happens in Mario 3 is, like, <laughs> you'll you'll not enter the level, but you'll press B, and then you'll select an item you didn't want. Instant reset. So I, I feel exactly your pain. Yeah, um, menus are easy to overlook, but they're they're important. Like there's yeah. there's time to be gained and lost with them for sure. Okay, we're just gonna actually start because you're too frame perfect on your uh, boss selecting here. I can't actually frame perfect. I tried, so I'm at two twenty one, and then we're just gonna start it and let it let it go, and you can. Uh... Okay, I'm I'm there, so I'm ready whenever. Okay, three, two, one, go. Do -do 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 -do. So top man, that that used to not be the boss you would do first, right? So yeah, I, I started speedrunning this game back in 2014. Um, when when I did back then, Checkers was the top dog. Uh, Gemini first was the route, and top people dog. ran that uh, pretty much exclusively back then. I don't think anybody else ran a different route. Um, when I started, I tried the Gemini route, and the Gemini boss fight was just too hard. I it was my first speed game. Um, I wasn't really interested in world record or anything like that. I just wanted to play the game, um, and so I chose Magnet first, which is how I played as a kid, and basically just kind of came up with some of my own strats for the route. Nice. Um, and then, uh, eventually I, I managed to get world record with that route. And then it came about that top first was faster. Um, so actually top first was before Gemini first. So this is before I even started speed running. So we've gone in a full circle. Uh, the, the, the first SDA world record for this game was top Powell, first, wasn't it? Was, was actually magnet. Uh, Frezzy man, like way back when. Oh man, Frezzy! Oh my god, that guy's unstoppable, man. Yeah, He's so had, it's like, gone. Everything. It's gone. Magnet top, Gemini magnet top. Like Jeez. that's that's what the world record has switched between. So that's insane. <laughs> that's such a beautiful progression, though, right? That's so awesome that it can like change and manipulate so much. Yeah, and it's just like a one strat or two strats here and there become, you know, RTA viable and then the route changes. Uh, it can be as simple as that. Or it can be, you know, these two routes are really close in time, but you just feel more comfortable with, a, you know, a certain route. And uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of unique that way and that uh, there's there's multiple routes people still run. I mean, we just had a classic relay and someone busted out the old school Gemini. So, yeah. So on this top battle, like, how come you don't just fully mash him? Like, it it shows that you're just shooting one one lemon at a time. Is there, like, a, a special thing? Like, can you not just over mash him, or do you have to... You can, um, but with this, the way his invincibility frames work, uh, they, they run out, like, every 28 frames or something like that. Uh, I, I feel like I'm going to time it better, just, just trying to time the shots on a, on a rhythm, um, rather yeah. than trying to mash it. Because even if I'm mashing, say, you know, 10 per second, that's putting those bullets six frames apart. And I feel like I can get closer if I try to time it rather than just, you know. Definitely, mash. definitely. Spray and pray. That's crazy, though. So Shadow, Shadow's next. This is Shadow, right? Yeah, so we have top. Um, that's uh, the the weakness, or Shadow's weakness is, is top spin. Um, this is, there's a big uh, uh, strat in the last screen, which is basically what it prevented people from doing top first in the past. Uh, it just was thought to be too slow without Magnet, um, which both the Gemini and Magnet first routes have. Um, now, this this screen right here, this is my favorite. This I was, I was just going to ask, do you think, like, is this screen as fun as it looks? 
It is super fun. It's Definitely. like everything in Mega Man 3, like everything about it is just... Your in, shots in just one, line up and there. yeah, you decrease lag and you're sliding. It's a good time, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is quite possibly the scariest strat in my opinion. Yeah, this this one's pretty fun. Um, top spin pushes you back. There, I, I messed up the last one, but otherwise those were really good. Um, the way top spin works is when you hit an enemy, there's there's a bunch of enemies in the game with just one shots. I know people hate top spin, but like it's a really powerful weapon. It's just tough to use. Well, yeah, uh, it pushes you, you back. So close. Yeah, it it pushes you back when you hit them, so you wouldn't make those jumps normally unless you like it's really precise. Uh, so turning right before you hit them actually pushes you the opposite direction. And so you're doing like a quick wiggle right as you're hitting them. True. Um, I didn't even think of that. Right yeah, on. that's what the, the task has done for years. And like people have tried it and just, just couldn't get it. And so, eventually. So why do uh, people have a lot of trouble with top? Like, so you'll use your top power. You'll get hit, obviously, because you're so close. And then you'll use your top again and it all depletes. <laughs> Like that's happened yeah. to me so many times, and I and like I why like why does do you know why it just depends. yeah actually so there was some misinformation on that when I first started speedrunning um I had heard that the way that you stop it is you just tap the button like if you hold it it drains the ammo but that's not how it works at all like, you can push it for a frame and you can lose it um, yeah so what happens is it drains for like every frame you're in the boss's hitbox so if you're in invincibility frames you'll actually keep spinning but oh my God. if you're not like when you hit him, your your spin will stop, so you'll stop draining it. So if you're in iframes and he's in iframes, basically you need to just stay on the edge of him. You need to attack him from the outside and then back away. Uh, what people tend to want to do is they turn with top spin right before they hit him, and then because top spin pushes you back, like you get sucked into his hitbox and you actually just yeah. Burn all your top spin and you're more. not visually spinning, right? But the game still thinks you are. That's why it's confusing. With iframes, actually, you are. You're you're still spinning. So if you're if you see yourself visibly spinning and you're in his hitbox, then yeah, it'll be draining like uh, instantly. So you want to like get out of there. Ooh, yeah, the glitch here. So you're supposed to fight a proto man at the top at the beginning, right? Or well, you're supposed to have a proto man cutscene. He kind of like helps you out at the beginning of this level, right? Yeah, he comes and like breaks that barrier. Um, it's actually a really cool trick. And if you have this game, I really suggest you try it out. It's actually pretty easy to do. Like if you do it, a few, if you try it a few times, you'll get it. But you slide in the previous screen. If you jump out before the slide ends and make it into the pit without touching the ground, it just skips the cutscene entirely. It doesn't, and then it kills the music too, which is the huge music turns game. off. Yeah. See, I don't have audio right now because we're talking, but the music will just completely turn off. Now, does the music being off save like at all? Any, any yeah, time it, or like lag frames or anything? Yeah. In in this game, it, it sure does. Uh, it actually makes a pretty huge difference. I I think there's like uh, three music despawns in the run, and I think in cumulatively they probably save about ten seconds or maybe more. Oh, wow, really? Like, yeah. I knew about them. I didn't know it was 10 seconds. That's insane. Well, you have to think, right? A small portion over the course of, like, a minute or, or a minute and a half, right? That kind of adds up. Yeah, Gemini is a really, really laggy stage, and playing the music just makes it even laggier. So, it's yeah, it, it's a huge time save to be able to skip it. Look insane. at this time. We're plus, what, five? That Which is normal reset for you, isn't it? But for some reason, you were like, nope. <laughs> going ahead <laughs> yeah so uh so this run actually happened on christmas eve or like the day the day before oh, christmas. christmas family was out of town for yourself. Uh, look at that did you have eggnog <laughs> yeah. there and everything right yeah. <laughs> Being all festive. yeah uh it just just so happened that like my family was out of town we were doing something small on christmas day and so i was doing runs on christmas eve and psh, here it happened um this is yeah, my uh, favorite level to uh for uh controller wise tech wise i like playing this level it feels good like on my fingers yeah this this screen here is really fun uh, anytime you're just like doing a lot of slides and jumps and just shooting that's the cool thing about this game is you're just like you're gunning enemies down left and right um and so there's just a there's a lot of activity it, it it's a really active game to play like there's yeah. just a lot of inputs shoulder pains incoming see mine was mine was my shoulder that was the problem i got from playing this game just the mashing right yeah yeah I've, I've had elbow problems um oh, it's so cool. it's nice shot. it's a f <laughs> yeah this this one i messed up but uh yeah just a very physically demanding game to play um agreed but yeah this this would normally be a reset um we we had our gdq classic relay just uh in january this this happened you know december a couple months ago and i was just taking any run uh it was important for me to basically just get runs uh try to get a gdq relay prep in uh yeah. cut out a lot of the really difficult strats and you know this this ended up being the result that's good is is um 
since the case of GDQs, is that the first time you started actually developing um, GDQ safe strats? Because I know any anyone who's who's not going to participate in any marathon or any GDQ or anything like that, they're not going to make up their own safe strats. There's no reason to if you're grinding for world records. So were you ever developing your own safe strats, or, or did GDQ and marathons help you create more things in the game? Uh, so I think, I think I learned safe strats before difficult strats, just because again, this was my first speed game. So I, I didn't start with like the craziest stuff right yeah, away. And you weren't and even so, gunning for world record either, right? You were just like, this game's awesome. Right. So a lot of backups I have are just, you know, strats I used to use that were safer. Um, or, you know, I, I, I just, I have a lot of muscle memory to fall back on from, from yeah. things I did in 2015 or whatever. But yeah, definitely was a different approach. Um, I, I always try to approach races and relays a little bit differently than I would a, a solo run, mm -hmm. like even a solo marathon run. Because yeah. like you want to kind of show off all the cool things, but in it's a also relay, not a you... world record attempt either. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, in a relay, you don't want to die and and you know lose it for your team or whatever. So I, I wanted to try to have as you know safe of a run as I could and give give my team a chance. Agreed. It's a, it's, it's a be better aspect. So there's a glitch in Snake Man where you don't actually need to rush jet over the snakes you can like slide into them and glitch through is that a time save is that super inconsistent do you guys understand or know how it works or what's up with that yeah so uh there there is a snake zip you can you can zip through them on the bottom the the task does it it's not that hard to do it's really hard to save time with um because the cause bumping the, around there's a little bit of rng in how many shots he shoots he can shoot two three or four if he shoots four you're probably going to get hit and then you're going to lose time and then the the three shot one is really really tight timing so it's it's something you can go for but for the sake of consistency uh it's usually like expected value type of thing you're you're probably gonna save time more often going just jetting exactly over. plus 10 minutes in right that time loss versus time save can be a big difference yeah uh the the first three stages in this route top shadow gemini are brutal so like if you're if you're grinding this game you're not going to get out of those stages very often yeah. Uh, it's tough to get to snake and then lose time and want to go back to those those first three stages once you're out of them which brings me to my next question um i'm not sure if it's the same in mega man one and two I'm, I'm not even sure if it's in four but is there a strategy that you guys have for the bosses because it seems like mega man wants to be in the center of the screen after you beat the boss yeah so they're they're actually different throughout pretty much all the games uh specifically to three there's two things you want to pay attention to. One, yes, you want to be in the middle of the screen uh, because you have to walk to the center to get your weapon at the end. So the closer to the center you are, the better. Uh, the other thing is where you kill the boss matters because he explodes into sprites that go in eight different directions. The yeah, victory the little orbs is... that are like pew, 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 right? Right, yeah. Yeah, nice sound effect. <laughs> Felt like I was playing. Right on. Um, uh, but yeah, if if you're close to the middle of the screen, those eight will like all go away sooner, like at, basically at the same time. So you want to kill the boss towards the center and be towards the center. So that can be that can be a little tricky. Um, but fights are kind of rounded that way. And then a lot of boss RNG uh, has to do with the pattern they give you and whether you're able to kill them in the center of the screen or not. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, so is there a number amount of boss battles or like, um, like patterns? I mean, so so you just fought Snake Man. Does he have like five patterns and it's frame dependent on when you enter uh, his chambers or the hallway chamber or or what? Or is there like infinite amount of patterns? So there is infinite. Um, it's, it's, so it is frame dependent, first of all. Uh, so it's really, it's not really something you can manipulate because the RNG carries over from stage to stage. Yeah. So it's not like Mega Man 9 or 10 where it's like a clean slate at the start of the stage and with the same movement you can get there. Like, it just doesn't work that way in this game. Um, but yeah, they basically have a fixed amount of patterns for how fast the fight goes. Like, Snake, you can see three things. Either he'll not shoot snakes, he'll shoot snakes from the center, or he'll shoot snakes from the left. Um, if you let the battle go on forever, you can have, you know, infinite number of patterns. Exactly. Yeah, per... definitely variations. But for the speed run, that's all we're concerned about is, you know, the first seven seven hits of the fight. Right on. That's, that's pretty cool. This boss seems then, like, like a joke, too. <laughs> Shadow Blade's pretty nice. So, Magnet First, the buster fight is actually really difficult to, to optimize. Right. And uh, there's a big difference between if he shields and if he jumps. And, uh, the, I mean, there's people that do that fight a lot better than I do with Buster. Uh, Streamline and, and Fatso have kind of innovated that fight since I stopped doing Magnet. But um, with Shadow Blade, yeah, if he goes up to the ceiling, you can hit him there, and it's just it's pretty easy. That's insane. Now, this strat is always, I think, the coolest because these bees are what makes you want to stop playing and go outside when you're a kid. These bees, the bees. Ah, then, the bees. 
Yeah, uh, it's pretty again pretty easy with Shadowblade. Uh, this is the top top first has brought in some changes that are a little bit easier. There's there's a lot of things that are more difficult, but usually in the first three stages, uh, we used to have to do Magnet and then Rush Coil, which is a lot harder than Shadowblade. Uh, but yeah, if if you don't kill them, they drop just a bunch of lag bombs on top yeah. of you. It's, oh it's my awful. gosh, and you keep getting hit, and oh, it's just a bad time. But I like I like using the shadow the Shadow Blades instead. The the Magnets. I, I don't think would be like overly difficult, especially if you're practicing, right? Any anything you practice long enough, you know, you'll get good at. But the shadows just makes it a dream. You're just sliding and shooting one blade, and that's it. No yeah. worries. Yeah, it just it looks a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. This is a lag fest too. You try and shoot that one guy. What are those guys called? Uh, Mets, Met metals, but yeah. we call them Mets. I I hate that screen. That one with the two Mets. That's my least favorite screen in the game. Really. It's just so short and simple, but at the same time, there's just like a ton of lag. And if there's a drop, it ruins, it just ruins you. Because oh you're God. expecting a certain timing to jump to the ladder, but the lag just causes a little bit of, uh, you know, well, you're gonna you're just going to jump early and bonk your head. And then yeah. uh, it, just, it just feels bad. <sighs> that sucks, man. You got to worry about drops too, right? We didn't even yeah. mention that earlier. Enemies will drop power-ups, which will either create more lag or if you've already taken damage and you accidentally walk into the power-up, boom, right? That's more time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, you can. It's easy to get your jump cut short. You know, you're expecting to hold A for a set amount of time to make the jump you need. Um, sliding mega, it's really important to be sliding as much as possible. So you try to cut your jumps tight over pits, uh, so that you can slide like on the leftmost pixel you possibly can. So you're you're not planning on jumping more than that. So if you get a drop, you're you're losing you know four frames of that of that jump, and you're probably just going to leave it short. So you have to know where the drops could happen and, you know, plan accordingly. Yeah, which, I mean, I'm sure something is, you'd, you'd get used to it after a while, but still something that's just like a drag, right? It's like frig, <laughs> these damn drops. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of getting used to, but then, you know, when you've played it as long as I have, I don't blame drops anymore. Like, if I die because of a drop, it was 100% my fault. Like, I, I know where they come, I know how to deal with them, you know. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that... you, like, do you have a lot of time to... Um change up how you're jumping or, or prepare for it like do you give yourself enough time is that because you know where they are or where they should be in some cases yes in some cases they'll be right on top of you um oh, and God. you just yeah and you just kind of plan your input as if you're going to get one and if you don't get it great uh you'll, you'll probably lose a little bit of time to optimal movement but it's not going to kill you you know that type of thing so yeah. just adjusting your approach so that you know the worst case scenario doesn't doesn't kill you now, I want to backtrack a little bit. Were, weren't you scared using up some of those magnets on that proto fight? Because you need the magnets to kill Hardman there. And you use <laughs> magnets to save yourself a little bit of time. But, like, aren't you scared that you use too many? It's happened. I mean, I've, I've lost runs because of that before. Uh, but it's not something I expect. Uh, okay, if, okay. If, you get, if you get enough buster shots in, there's a little bit of leeway there. You should have a couple extra magnets. Right on. Um, and if, if the beginning of the fight goes poorly and you don't hit him with enough buster shots, you might not want to switch to Magnet because you don't have enough. <laughs> yeah. So this is a god pattern right here. He he has he can do one, two, three, or four jumps. But as we talked about earlier, like two jump being right in the middle of the screen, I can in the middle, he can in the middle. It's yeah, I didn't even think about that. You you guys were like both ended it, ended it in the middle. And you took a little bit of damage so you could be more in the middle, right? Right at the end, right? Yeah, it used to be. I think I took damage <laughs> in like every boss fight. Uh, just to position yourself better. Yeah. Um, I, I think I've cut out some of those, but it's still a lot of times really helpful to take damage just so you can be where you uh, be in the center of the screen along with the boss. So for anyone who doesn't know, after you do the eight robot masters, you have to do these refights, right? Yeah. Uh, so you revisit the, some of the stages. The the stage design is different, but they're based upon you know the the tile set or whatever of the original. Of course. But instead like of fighting. Gemini. Gemini, right? Yeah, so this is Gemini. Uh, but instead of fighting Gemini Man here, we actually fight two different bosses. There's a mid-stage boss and then an end boss, and they're uh, taken from Mega Man 2. So you're basically refighting bosses from a previous Mega Man game, which I think is pretty cool. Like, I think that's a really uh, cool idea, too. Yeah, it, it kind of creates some continuity for the series, uh, and you know, you get to see these bosses again. You get to fight them with different weapons. Um, now you have the slide. Their hitboxes are bigger. The, the room arena is different. So it's like it's the same fight, but with a new twist, and I, I think it's pretty neat, like speedrunning both games, how, how different mm. they are. Do they actually have the same patterns? Very similar. Okay. Uh, some of them are exactly the same. Um, some of them are tweaked slightly, but they're they're very very close. Because mm -hmm. you're if... running Mega Man Two right now, so you you have a very good idea as if things are changing, right, for patterns. 
Yeah, right. So, like, like in the original Flashman fight, when you hit him when he's on the ground, he'll jump. But here he doesn't do that. Uh, but otherwise, he still, like, kind of walks towards you, still flashes you, that type of thing. <laughs> he just so. walked to his death. He was like, yeah, here I come. He didn't even realize you went over him. He's like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> just kept going. <laughs> oh, So, scariest screen in the game? It looks scary. It's not that bad. See, all these drops, like, these are just things that I've just, oh, man. No, stop watching. Stop watching. Um, <laughs> so it's Mega Man 4 that's really janky sliding in water, right? So 4 and 5, you can't jump out of slides underwater. So uh, like, weird. It's a little different. Um, 3, you can't jump out of slides in the first 8 frames of your slide. So, like, there's just, there's really kind of oddball quirks with the movement in each game. Mm -hmm. um, all of them have something that you just are, like, kind of scratch your head about. Like, oh, I wonder why they made that choice. We got the, the bubble man. So do you still have to worry about the same bubble man thing here? One, two, or three bubbles? Yep. So I got That's one, cool. which is lucky. Lucky as in you're saving time on lag. Lag, right? like 1.3 seconds, I think, from the difference between the one bubble and the three bubble pattern. Wow, there's a lot of boss big. fights in this yeah it's pretty big uh there's there's several bosses in this game where the rng is kind of like that it's like about a second uh if you get the best pattern versus the worst it doesn't feel like at any point where, where you're getting like screwed by rng uh until you get to wily one but um it definitely adds up a little bit over the course of the run mm -hmm. um i was gonna say since you can't hear from sound uh we talked about the sound glitch happening right um, yeah, so that's a different one. You did um, it here in this level, right? Yeah, so this this setup is pretty easy. This uh, just gonna tell a little story real quick. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so this definitely. One, so this is a this is a task thing, uh, and I had started speedrunning in 2014, um, and the again, like the the world record was checkers. So shortly after that, Ohan uh, broke the world record, got a 34.57. Like I didn't even know he was running the game. He just <laughs> came you know, out of nowhere. Just came out of nowhere like he does and got a great run like he does. And he did that music despawn, which I did there. Basically the same setup I used there. Slightly different. Like it's it's tweaked to be a bit faster, but basically the same thing. Um and I I came into speedrunning just uh, expecting that like all the strats had been found. Like people have been speedrunning since I mean, how long have you been speedrunning? Dude, long time. And I think, you know, I th I've thought the same thing for certain things too. Trust me, I, I feel you on that one. Yeah, and so I, I see someone coming with a strat I'd not seen before that changed this level hugely. I mean, that's like a three-second time save in this in this stage, just killing the music there. Mm -hmm. um, what you're doing is you're screen transitioning on the same frame that you hit the spikes. And so it plays the death sound, but you don't die. And the music doesn't start up again until you get to the next music trigger, which is the boss. Because the game um, thinks you're dead, essentially. Right, right. And so after you die, the music's dead. It doesn't continue. So, yeah. Um, and so... Ohan just has this video, and we're all trying to figure out how he did it. And uh, uh, a, a friend of mine, Wally, who kind of like shepherded me through my early speedrunning with Mega Man Three because he ran a lot back in the time. Uh, like he figured out we were like is that we were like Wally, excited. Is that Wally, Wally Aldo. Aldo? Wally Aldo. That's yeah. right. Yep. Know him. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. And so and so we were just like kind of communicating and like trying to figure out like how this strat was done, and it was just like really exciting to try to figure it out. And that was like the moment it kind of clicked for me that like, oh man, like there's there's still stuff to find. The windows, right? Yeah. Uh, and it just, it was just kind of opened my eyes. And from then on, like I've been a little bit more diligent in speed games about like looking for things that are faster and trying to improve upon what's been done before rather than just like copying a route. Yeah, which is, I think, which is the best thing. Like copying one thing, sure, for consistency, but like don't ever be shy of trying to discover or you know look for anything even though the game has been run for so long there's like mario 3's had a bunch of things discovered in it this year already which is yeah and, stupid and it's such a popular speed game and it's been run for so long it's just amazing that that can still be the case but it is just all over the place right just dumb stupid stuff right yeah mario 1 they're like running it completely differently now right exactly <laughs> and, and that's that's nuts for how much optimization a game like that has so i yeah, always, it just I, I always tell anyone, you know, spend as many hours as you like. Like, don't stop looking. Just every dead end doesn't mean there isn't a potential for, like, you know, a right way. You just got to keep going. And some yeah, things are a dead end and some things aren't, you know? You never know. Yeah. Speedruns are really cool. It's like this big community effort where, like, everybody pools their knowledge and their resources to just try to beat a game as fast as possible. And, like, in some case, like, definitely there's competition. And, like, you, you, you want to pass people on the leaderboard and, you know, 
and all that. But like everybody shares strats. It's not like that's what I was gonna say too. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's big collaborative effort, and so uh, it's it's fun to be part of a community that's that's finding strats. And like my run is just the the you know kind of culmination of a community's worth of effort. I probably have something from fifteen different people's run, uh, you know, in my speed run, just strats that I've seen someone else do and be like, oh wow, that's really good. Um, like that's definitely faster than what I'm doing. And, and in a lot of cases, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, in a lot of cases, uh, people just came up with that because that was the most natural thing for them to do, and it just turned out to be faster. Yeah. Um, and so it's really cool when when people bring their own ingenuity into you know into a speed run. It it doesn't matter how long you've been running or you know what what kind of skill set you have. Like it just it's it's always good to have more people running your game. Agreed. And I mean, you've implemented some of your own discovered things or some of your own you know made up tech in this run as well, right? It's not all everyone's different things, right? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've I've done some strat finding. Um, it's it's usually just a lot of minor optimizations as far as movement goes. Some of um, that is honestly the most important thing in speedrunning, though. I'd say those minor optimizations is what like can push you to that next yeah. level. Like bringing it to a, a sub thirty four, right? That was that wasn't even sought after. Yeah, nobody thought that was possible. Uh, when I when I started running, or even when Vison got the record down to thirty four twenty seven, um. I had people that know Mega Man runs very well. They they see movement really well, and they're like, "Yeah, I, I don't see how thirty seconds can come off of that run." Um, and so, yeah, it, it was it was definitely a challenge of mine. Once I got close enough, that like, yeah, that's, that's this is something that I wanted. I wanted a sub thirty four, um, and now it's like this. It, it maybe mid thirty three. Like who who knows? Like it's just gonna keep going down as new stuff is discovered. So right in this run, you you have a lot of pluses. Like what if you had the second half of the run with a better front half of the run, right? Like your right. time and could have if, been a 33, 30 something. Right. And uh, you know, what if, what if some riskier strats were in the run that weren't, you know, part of, part of relay prep and, you know, stuff that causes more resets, but is definitely faster. Some of that stuff's not in this run. Here's another music beep on. I think I hit that one in this run. Yeah. I think, I think you got it as well. So he did that spike thing. Anytime there's like spikes in screen transitions, I guess is like, you guys instantly are like, yo, we, we should go for this. <laughs> yeah, this so this one nobody did forever. Um, I think in like 2016 I started doing it uh, because the, the setup for this one is pretty pretty janky. Uh, compared to the Doc Shadow one where it's just like a sequence of inputs, this one is like you have to read your pixel on the screen transition and then uh, there's a risky pixel which gives you like a pretty high chance of getting it, but if you don't, it kills you. Ah. And then like a safe pixel where you can either get it or not get it. Um, but the if you don't get it, it doesn't kill you, but it's 50-50. So we kind of aim for the 50-50 pixel and then just hope, you know, that we're going to get it. But if we're feeling bold and, you know, we got the the risky one, like, you know, I, I'm always going to go for it. Like it saves a second and a half. And Yeah. So that one know, even I, saves a second and a half as well? Because I noticed it was at the halfway mark of the level as opposed to being closer to the beginning like uh, like the other one. <laughs> uh yeah that strat there um that's that's another example of something that came up recently that like nobody ever thought to look for until someone you know someone took a look at it uh bought up actually so in the in the proto fight when you're teleporting up after you kill him you can actually pause at a certain spot and unpause and then instead of Mega Man teleporting up to the top it just immediately fades to black like wow. I don't know who would even think to pause like after you've finished that. <laughs> right? But Why would you did. press start? <laughs> yeah, but someone did, and it's 15 frames faster if you would optimally. It's like awesome, cool. We're doing that now. But like, yeah, Free where did time. that come from? It's pretty. It's pretty cool how some people's minds work and how they approach speedrunning because that's not something I would have ever thought of. No, nope, definitely not. So there's two things with the Wileys that I. Well, one thing that didn't Wily is Mega Man Three, the one with the most bosses. Oh. Uh... That sounds like it could be true because I mean you're fighting two bosses per mid stage, so yeah, probably. Yeah, there's 16 before you even go to Wily's, isn't there? And then you got the proto, I guess that's kind of like a boss after, so that's like, that's a lot of bosses in this. Never, yeah, never... yeah, and there's six castle stages, and not all the games have that many. Um, I mean, I guess if you're including Doc Robots, like basically 10 stages after the eight robots, which mm -hmm. is which is more than normal. So another, yeah, there's another, there's a lot of bosses. Another refight. So I was gonna ask the Wily's like. Mega Man 3's Wily seems so short. Do you think that is because of the long early game? It's a good question. I'm not really sure. I've, I've heard a lot of different things about Mega Man 3's development, that it was rushed, that they had a lot more plans for it. I, I don't know if they intended for the Wily stages to be more fleshed out than they are. I think it works because I think the Doc Robot stages are really long, and I think if these ones were just as long, uh, 
I think it would kind of trivialize the first eight. I, uh, but I'm I'm not sure. Well, Frig, it's like 26 minutes just to get through eight, essentially eight bosses, but then you have to do the refights. So that's a long time for for a Mega Man game, isn't it? Just to do yeah. the first section before you get to Wily. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I I don't think the Wily stages here wear out their welcome. I think all the stages feel different. I think there's some interesting tech in in all the stages, but they're not they're not overly long, and I'm okay with that. This is the actual world record, yes. Unless someone beat you 20 minutes ago and we just found out. Man, if so, I need to drop out of this call and get to work. <laughs> Give up on the Mega Man too. <laughs> I saw I saw Scythe doing runs today. I thought he I thought he was stopping and now he's he's back on it. Nobody can resist, man. Rockman 2 is hot. Dude, you can't get over it, man. He tried to escape, man. I knew he couldn't. You just No, no, the you love can't, is you too can't strong. Get away. Yeah. Yeah, there's a tournament coming up for that game too, so True. I heard so. I heard some talk that if if one person enters, then another person enter. Very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. Yep, yep. Yeah. There's. This, it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> Mega Man tournaments are a blast. I've done a few of them, and they're they're always fun. To be honest with it's... you, Mega Man Three has its first one right now, and it's a randomizer, and I'm having a blast. I'm having a great time. It's. Yeah. I I agree with you. Are you one to join tournaments typically, or? No, no, definitely not. And now that I've joined this one and I'm just ha trying to have fun with it, I regret not joining. So if anyone yeah, out there has a chance to join any of these game tournaments, do it. Yeah, it's it's kind of the uh, it's it's kind of just the new thing. I mean, as of like a year or two ago, like tournaments just started popping up everywhere, and like people aren't getting sick of them. They're they're a lot of fun. So right? I want to start picking my fantasy team. Oh man. <laughs> Fantasy I haven't gone that far too. with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But it'd be cool to see other speedrun things. Like uh, I know Jimmy Poopins was talking about a speedrun league where, like, you you know, if you have a weekly race, like, kind of have it where there's competition and like standings, and then like a playoffs at the end, stuff like that. I I'd love to see more stuff. That more would be really there. cool. I agree. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's fun to see you know people kind of uh, pushing the envelope on what speedrunning is and like what what we can do with it. Right, and these tournaments can expand too. Like, I, I, maybe I should try and join a Mega Man Three tournament. You know what I mean? Not be so enclosed by one game all the time. You know? Yeah. Broaden. It's 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 tough, man. Like, okay, I, so hold on. What was that glitch? I think okay, a lot of people so, get confused by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is kind of an interesting one. Uh, basically, in this game, you can't change weapons if you have a bullet on screen, but they don't make that check for the rush weapons. So, uh, you shoot a rush coil bullet. It allows you to switch to top. Now the rush coil shot that's already on the screen will take on the properties of top spin, so it becomes that's a so top cool. spin. Yeah, and so now like it has a uh, it pierces like top spin does and just does damage every frame until he dies. It looks like it one shots him, but it's actually like doing damage per frame. It's pretty crazy. But but top is the weakness for that fake mega fight. Uh, either top or snake. Yeah, snake. That's right. Um, but yeah, top just happens to kill him so quickly. It's, it's a pretty neat strat. There's a lot of interesting tech in this game. Uh, for a game that doesn't really have many zips, like Mega Man 1 or 2, there's just like a lot of like kind of oddball uh, irregularities in like how the game is coded that allow for some like weird things. Well, in 2014 when you started, was the tech to press select one sliding to remove rush coil or rush jet, was that a thing? Um, yeah, so pressing pressing start to cancel him was a thing back then. Oh, start, sorry, yeah, start. Um, there, there's stuff like that, there's stuff like page turning the menu with the B button, like stuff that I just never figured out until someone told me. <laughs> right. Um, it's always nice when, when stuff like that is documented, but, uh, it, it's kind of cool that, like, discords exist and, and stuff for, like, new runners to ask questions, and, um, we really want to try to put some work into, like, the, the wiki pages and all that, so that questions like that, things you just, like, probably are not likely to discover on your own, like, you that they're that's documented somewhere i never considered once to use b for the menuing and there yeah, was, there was all this like tech right you had like free didn't you have free movement yeah like your first movement was like free in the menu or something like you you hold the oh yeah yeah you can you, you can buffer you can buffer your first uh, menu input exactly so you would think pressing b was useless because you'd already hold to go to like the screen switch or something right and yeah yeah that's yeah. why these things are like so <sighs> mind blowing I, I, I've been playing this game since I was eight years old. Like I'd never press B <laughs> to, to to change the menu page. Like I just I don't know. Like right. I, I'm not. I wasn't really imaginative when it comes to you know video games. And yeah, there's there's always something to learn with these games. It's crazy, right? I think I think some of the coolest things is when when you think you've hit a certain point at a game, and there's just people out there in the world who just show you different. It just like opens your eyes. I think you said you mentioned something about that before. So at this point in the run, were you like, I have it? 
I'm feeling pretty confident at this point. Like these last two bosses are 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 pretty trivial. That said, I have lost world records to both this boss and the next one, um, which is the worst feeling and the most embarrassing thing. Because like, if you ask any Mega Man three runner that has played this for a while, uh, these these are just not bosses you should fail ever. But you know, the the nerves pile up and you're on a pace you've never been on before. You know, it. You never know what's going to happen. So you, it looked like you, you shot two snakes there so that you created lag, so that when you jumped up and you shot, you could shoot as many as you wanted and they would keep doing damage. But because you're lagging, you're in the air longer. Yeah, uh, some people have fast enough mashing to actually do it without. But for me, I, I'm a you know mashing pleb. So uh, you actually use lag in your favor there. Like you're trying to reduce lag everywhere else. But there, you know, you shoot a couple shots. You really slow down him in dropping so you can kill him in one jump. It's pretty pretty neat tech. Are you nervous right here? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I was a little nervous, but I had such a lead uh, that I, I was feeling okay. I was I was feeling all right. I had just lost a run to Gamma, like, I think a couple days before this. Like, I was playing really well this week. <sighs> I'm nervous week. for you just watching that. <laughs> Jeez. But I... Uh, I'm one, so I, I've been speedrunning a while, and I'm, I'm pretty hard on myself. Um, it, it all comes from a good place. Like, I just like to improve. Um, I expect a lot out of myself. And, like, I would say this is the first PB that I was, like, happy with at the end, where I'm like, this this was a good run. You finally um, felt like you hit where you, like, belong or, like, where you think your skill should have taken you? Yeah, it was closer to what I felt like my... Uh, what, yeah, exactly like you said. Um, I can't really put it any better than that. So it... it it, it was a good feeling um, by that point, like the the seven seconds that I lost on my gold split in Gemini was like an ancient memory. I just I just remember like how well I felt playing the second half of that run. Um, yeah. And you were probably so happy you didn't reset. It's like one of those like, I can't believe like you didn't stick with your guns like that. Plus five is totally a, a reset point, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, and looking back now, there's it's a double edged sword, right? Like I can look back and be like, wow, good thing I continued because I got this run. And I can also be like, oh man, what if I had done this second half without a plus six beginning? Like maybe I should have reset until I had, you know. Uh, you can Don't look at torment it. yourself, okay? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> you can look at it one of two ways, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I feel good about this. Um, it was, it was a good run for where it's at. I'm looking forward to going back and improving it at some point. Um, hopefully, hopefully, but probably towards the middle of this year. Uh, and yeah it's just been it's been such a great journey with this game i just love playing this game so much um, it, it was it's almost as if it's an adventure like with the way things progress like when your first the the first way you looked at this as a speed game back then in 2014 and the way you look at it now is just like so different and it's about like the speed running and being a part of the community and having everything change and then that's where like the love comes from right yeah um the community has been great uh so like i've done a bunch of different hobbies prior to this one uh and this is the first one that just really grabbed me and not let me go uh i i can't think of anything else where i've spent four years uh just just doing the same thing the community has been so awesome it's the people around it that make it so much fun to do um, I, and i just I, feel like i found a home with twitch and speedrunning right i find that speedrunning is also one of those hobbies where you you push yourself more than the average hobby you know what i mean like like speedrun has really pushed themselves far i mean perfect example was like we got like look at the visuals we got when we watched scythe get that world record like like can, like what do you think goes through a speedrunner's mind to make them feel that way once they achieve that goal right like two days prior to that how do you think he felt about like his runs like he said it was his last one wasn't it like he's like i can't do this right now i gotta stop and then like look at the way he reacted when he got it it's like the most inspiring yeah. impressive yeah thing. i mean he but left it to the very last minute like he he was he was going to put it down and he had one chance to do it and he did it and it's like how how do you even react react to that i, right? I can't imagine I, I can't imagine keeping any kind of composure <laughs> well also at the same time his reaction showed like how much like that was weighing on his shoulders like how sure. much you know maybe lost sleep from it who knows you know what i mean like not ever achieving your goal and working so hard for those goals is probably the, like the worst thing right so everyone yeah. should always keep going for their goals no matter what yeah it's tough um i i definitely agree with that and then i also think that you know you you have to be happy with what you have too like i mm -hmm. i know i know you know uh, as speedrunners we tend to beat ourselves up over the smallest imperfections but <laughs> right uh, like frames 
but like what we do is incredible. Um, it's it's just amazing that we hit these two frame tricks ninety five percent of the time. Like you have to step step back and think that like that the amount of work you've put in and your ability to do these things is, is pretty incredible. Um, and so you know it, it it's it's good to be hungry for more and it's good to push yourself and all that. But like you can't forget that you know what what you've done is is really impressive and PB's a PB uh, right. Yeah, you have to remember where you came from too, and like how much work it took to get you there, and and like the measured improvement. That's the cool thing about speedrunning. You have a timer, like you can see exactly how much you're improving. Right. Like you play a music, you play a musical instrument, and like it starts to sound better, right? But like here, like you have a you have a time. Like this this time shows you, like you're you're obviously getting better. You're doing, um, you're doing something right, and so it's a, it's a really good feeling to just keep chasing that. And visual recorded proof as well. You can, yeah, yeah, you can rewatch your run all the time and and really figure some stuff out just by watching it. Yeah, um, yeah, just just a great hobby. I I can't recommend it enough. It's it's been a lot of fun. Mega Man Three, great game. Um, Agree. I, I I only got into speedrunning because of this game. There wasn't like a there wasn't a pull to speedrun necessarily. There was just this like I really like Mega Man Three and I want to play it fast. So hold on, um, uh, hold on. We can like we can like go into that like progressively. Sure, sure. Why why uh, Mega Man Three though? Like I know Mega Man Three pulled you in. I am a strong believer of like the game essentially chooses the player. Like this, I love like so many games, but for some reason Mario Three childhood game just appealed to me. That's it. Just it was never not going to be Mario Three. It was always going to be Mario Three, right? Yeah, and it seems it, like for Mega Man's and Mega Man Three. So why Mega Man Three for you? It's hard to even say. Um, so this was a, obviously it was a game that I had growing up. Um, I think that's the case for a lot of speedrunners that like have their first love. It's just we we had a game that we've always loved and, and kind of wanted to jump into it. Um, this is a game that I like always kind of return to like in teenage years. Like I'd go back and play it every so often. Um, Press like, your friends in high school. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's it's funny. uh it's it's an interesting thought trying to uh, you know impress people from your childhood with uh, playing a game that <laughs> played back in 1980 but um or 1980s but uh yeah I don't know and it even as I moved on from like because I don't really play platformers anymore um this was something that I it was just a childhood love and like I kind of got into RPGs casually and all that um but yeah this one I just I just always loved it it's just I, I can't even say why uh, I could I could I could come up with reasons. But really, it's just a game that always clicked with me. It just always resonated with me. I had fun playing it. Childhood memories, visuals, music, controls, you know, all, yeah. that, all that stuff yeah. just all, combined together. Yeah, all that stuff just rolls into it. Um, and yeah, like you said, the game just chose me. There was not another run, speed run I was interested in. And like which, I've gone, which... I've grown to run other games and I've had a lot of fun with them. But like this is, this is my love. Like this is the one that I'll always come back to. You can never cheat on your love. No, never, never could. Happen. Never could. This is always priority number one. So um, I guess we're, we'll slowly start to wrap this up, but before we do, do you, do you have like any advice for anyone in chat or anyone out there with like, you know, any kind of advice who want to either get into speedrunning or who are having doubts about speedrunning or, or even having a bad time? They're not achieving any of their goals, you know, any advice at all? Um, yeah, I guess there's a couple. One, I mean, just just for people that are interested in speedrunning, I would just say it's really easy to do because like a lot of people look at it and just say, Oh, I can't do that. Like that's, that's too precise or whatever. And it's not even about that. It's about beating the game as fast as you can and then beating it as fast as you can again and taking what you've learned the first time. Like it doesn't matter where you start. Um, eventually stuff becomes easier and easier. And it's really just about like, if you think it'd be fun, do it. It's really easy to do. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the other thing, because you mentioned that, um, this is something I see a lot. People like get to a point where they're walled in a game and they don't know how to improve um and it's the, one of the worst feelings when like you just feel like you've capped out on a game um right. yeah. and so yeah so to, to to offer some advice there um so i used to be an emulator player and like it was really easy for me to like to frame test stuff so like you can go into emulator and it's it's this is pretty easy to do as well like you can see how many frames it takes to do a trick a certain way or another way um and so you can you can kind of examine what you're doing um but without even doing that like you can take a look at other runs uh, or either even other runners that do similar strats and just seem to be faster. Look where they're saving their time. You know, take your gold splits and compare your gold splits to theirs. Uh, where are you losing the most time? And then narrow it in even further. Like, is it is it movement? Is it, um, you know, it, sometimes you're blind as to what the tech is in a game, what actually causes you to be faster. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't be afraid to, to look at those things, to ask questions. Uh, yeah, cause because expanding your knowledge, too, is can help you as well, right? 
Yeah, I, I think it's probably even more important um, to, to realize uh, how a game works than it is to just play it a ton. Um, and so, yeah, I, I would say I, that's the kind of the advice I would give for, for people that are like trying to improve is like look at it in, in at a finer level. I agree. I think one of the scarier things, too, is um, if you avoid doing what the advice you just gave and then you get yourself in a comfortable zone which can be very bad because you have to reteach yourself to get out of that comfort zone to learn the new stuff, right? Yeah. Don't, so... don't be ignorant towards like learning like everything about the game before you get yourself into this little rut, which could be very scary. To give an example of my mentality when I'm trying to improve in this game, I look at a pit and I say, have I died in that pit? And if not, then that means I'm not doing that jump optimally. It means like I'm taking that jump too <laughs> safe if I've never died there. That's actually that, really that's how good. I feel. Yeah, I've never even thought about that. That's and so I cut it tighter and tighter until I'm right on the edge of what will be fast and allow me to live. Um, and it can be tough to get runs going that way, uh, but that's how you're going to get faster. <laughs> Damn, that's insane. Um, well, one quick thing. Uh, what's your favorite pizza topping, dude? If I don't ask this question, people are going to go crazy. So this is uh, this is probably going to piss some people off, but I actually just like cheese pizza more than anything. I think any topping you put on pizza actually detracts from it. That's how I feel. So extra cheese is like that's the only topping I can say actually enhances a pizza. Anything else you're actually making the the cheese and the sauce, the <laughs> beauty, the beauty that is pizza. The beauty. <laughs> Oh. You're uh, you're distracting from that when you're add topping. Just adding straight toppings. That's how I feel. Now me, I like I I like toppings, but if I would ever choose just just straight up pepperoni and cheese. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean that's good. Sim simple. I'm a simple man. You speak oh to me God. with that. Everyone's like, get out of the call, end the interview. <laughs> <laughs> cheese pizza. Oh um, man. Well, w with that being said, man, um, that's that's really it. I I. I, I really hope you've inspired more people in chat and you've even me you've definitely um shown me a different way like a different um outlook on on certain things that maybe i would be able to apply to my speed game so i'm very i'm very grateful that you came on and and uh expressed what you've learned from speedrunning and told us you know what it means to you that's very good I, yeah it's fun i i really enjoy talking about speedrunning, like just right. the act of speed running and, and everything about it so i, I appreciate the opportunity to do that and if, if people like to talk speed running just just hit me up on discord or whatever like it's it's not something i get to do enough it's it's so much fun just to talk about like the mechanics of yeah it can like, you what... can you actually go ahead and put your twitch in my chat uh can you plug your twitch and and uh your discord and stuff like that and if anyone has any questions that I, they want to hit them up directly do that and Go give him go give him a follow because you stream regularly, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you're an evening streamer. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, usually late night, but sometimes during the day too. Yeah, and you do you do variations of Mega Man right now. You're not solely focusing on Mega Man three, but eventually you'll come back to it and you do other Mega Mans and yeah. So you guys should go give him a follow. Definitely go give him a follow if you haven't, because this has been this guy knows his speedrunning. Yeah, there you go. Discord and everything, and but yeah, a lot I of always, fun. Thank I you. always spell discrod. I always call it discrod. <laughs> I don't know why. My fingers just don't work on key keyboard. But yeah, had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for for having me on. It was it was a blast to talk about that stuff. So. Dude, I had so much fun. Thank you for the inspiration too. Thank you for the wise words, man. You really you really got got it down to a T. Yeah, for sure. Keep doing your thing. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Have a good night. Yep. Take it easy. Yo, what up, you frigs? Dude, I told you guys, having Fasta was a good idea, man. He knows his speedrunning. He knows his speedrunning. You guys didn't want to believe me. You guys didn't want to I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing you guys. Okay, where are we going here? Gameplay. We got to turn this back on. Um... Sorry about that. There we go. We got the good audio. Dude, that was a fantastic interview. Back to the SMB3, yes. Back to the SMB3. I I really wanted to get um Cypher as well, man. His watching his world record run, oh man, it made me want to pick his brain as well. I just want to dig into all the Mega Man players. Yeah, cool kid and Cypher. Mega Man is such a physically demanding speed game. Mario 3, 